It's interesting, you know, sometimes collecting will go into fads. And over the past few years, for some reason, the Colt snake guns, you know, the Cobra, the, the, the Viper, the, the Anaconda, these, these are just going crazy on the collector market. And probably the most popular one is the Colt Python, with, with darn good reason, because the Colt Python is very possibly the finest production revolver ever built in the United States. Uh, it's considered so by many experts, including Jeff Cooper, and uh, who might argue with Jeff. The year's 1955, and Colt debuts its Python revolver to the uh, gun-owning public. And it sets the, uh, the revolver world on its ear. Colt and Smith & Wesson had long been considered some of the finest revolver makers in the country for decades. Uh, but with the uh, introduction of the Python, the f f Colt's first 357, this gun is amazing. It's a Cadillac, the Rolls-Royce, the uh, penultimate revolver. There's some writers and historians who said it's still the finest quality-wise revolver ever made. The funny thing about the Python is they didn't have a long intensive development program. It was essentially the guys on the floor and making guns trying to come up with a match target revolver and they used mostly existing uh, pieces and parts to assemble the first one. But they caught the genie in the bottle because the gun they created was really one of the finest looking handguns ever made. And also one of the finest handling. Uh, when you pick up a Colt Python and you work the action, it doesn't sound like other guns. You know, it's got the same basic trigger that Colt introduced in 1889. But when you put all of that together in a gun of that size and of that quality of manufacture that was being made at that time, it's a special gun. In the old days, parts were made on machinery that was dependent on the skill of the operator. And so when the, the parts came together and the assembler went to build the gun, in some cases, uh, for lock work parts, there were multiple sizes of a specific part that were made so that when it was being assembled, the first size could be tried, and if it didn't work quite as well, then maybe the second size could be tried. But then after that, there was still hand fitting. So that's a, that's a laborious process, an expensive process, so that's, that's why those guns in their time were relatively, were, were relatively expensive, but now have uh, you know, increased in value considerably. And, and pythons now, really the prices are measured in thousands of dollars. Colt struggled some with the python for years. It was a pricey gun, $125 when new. Um, that was not cheap. You could buy a nice Smith & Wesson for a lot less money than that. But this was a big gun that shot well, that could handle 357 Magnum and not make you scream from shooting a couple of cylinders full of hot loads. Um, it had very good sights. It had excellent balance. When you hold a Colt Python up, it's a big gun, but you can hold it up there and it just doesn't move. The problem for Colt was cost of materials. You know, this is an all steel gun. Um, the time of those skilled workmen, uh, all of this stuff added up and it made the gun become increasingly expensive over time. But the other problem was those same people that made the Python so magical retired or died. And so it got to the point where there were very few people working in Colt's plant that could do the polish that was expected of a Python. And so in the 90s and into the early 2000s, you see only intermittent availability of the Python. When Colt discontinued its Python lineup in the early 2000s, the reason that they did that was because the kind of work and the kind of craftsmanship that had to go into these guns in order to make the guns what they were just wasn't economically viable. So the Colt Python disappeared until 2020. 
In 2020, a new version of the Colt Python was reborn and it looked a lot like the old version. And in terms of uh, overall appearance, in terms of its design, it appeared in all instances to be very much like the Pythons of yesteryear. But it's what's under the surface that really counted in these new Colt Pythons. This gun looks like a python. It handles like a python. All stainless steel. It's got wooden stocks, not the Coke bottle, you know, big stocks, but still to that pattern. And you can even put original python stocks on this thing if you want to. But they did a lot of things differently in terms of the gun's construction. You have a top strap that's about 30% beefier, just to kind of strengthen the gun up. But also, um, it gets that rear sight pretty low. The front sight, like the other more recent snake guns, uh, there's a simple screw in the front. You turn that out and you can replace your front sight. It's not just a blade that's there forever. But inside is where they really made a difference on this gun. And they simplified it. They removed parts. Uh, they moved uh, the locking bolt, how it interacts with the other trigger parts. And so it's more like a Smith & Wesson, really, than an old Colt, but that's okay. Uh, they went to uh, a new V-spring that actually gives the gun a very nice action. The original Python is a beautiful machine when it's timed properly. Um, but some of those guns, they go out of time. This gun is designed so that doesn't happen. What uh, impressed me on shooting it was the difference between 38 Special and 357 Magnum am ammunition was not much at all. Normally, in a revolver this size, when you start shooting Magnums, you, you get quite a bit more muzzle flip, uh, it hits your hand pretty hard. There's something about this grip and the way it feels to where this gun just is mild with 357s. I was very impressed with that. What we used to be able to do with, with the Python action, all the Colts, is you'd be able to stage it right back to there and then align your sights and press through. I had to really work at it to make that happen right now. What this does is just go straight through. It doesn't have that hitch unless you really know how to do it, and I've, I've done this for you know a lifetime, but you won't get that hitch and that stop in the trigger. This has a smooth press all the way through, and it can be fired very quickly. The double action trigger is the best double action trigger I have ever felt on a factory gun. It's always difficult to reissue a, a, a classic. There are always comparisons made, some fair, some unfair, but I think the six inch barrel python was the, the quintessential large, heavy, but beautifully produced, uh, sweet shooting, double action revolver of its day. And I think Colt has done a great job of recapturing a great deal of the uh, mystique of the originals.